Hello and a very good morning to all our viewers. You're watching the breaking news show on CNN News 18 with me, Sakshi Singh Litoria, here to walk you through all the top headlines from the nation and across the globe. At the top of this segment, we'll be discussing the hottest topic which is currently going on in our country, the Kattachivu matter. Uh, now, the escalating Kachativu island dispute, of course, sees a new relevations emerging out in the light. CNN News 18, in fact, has obtained a 2008 document from Sri Lankan Foreign Ministry indicating that India surrendered fishing rights as early as 1974. This agreement was then in 1976 further entrenched this decision. Now, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin has criticized the RTI revelation, disputing its validity. Meanwhile, External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar, of course, recalls Sadar Vallabhai Patel's warning to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru about India's relations with China, highlighting a past where Nehru prioritized China over India, stating... Uh, and I'm going to quote him here that there was a time when Nehru said that India second, China first. Tamil Nadu ke paas samandar mein ek kachcha thivi tapu hai, dweep hai. Wo dweep Bharat ka hissa tha, lekin Congress ne usko Sri Lanka ko de diya. अभी द्वीप के आसपास भी कोई भारतीय मछुआरे गलती से चला जाता है तो उसे गिरफ्तार किया लिया जाता है जेल में बंद कर दिया जाता है आप मुझे बताइए ऐसी कांग्रेस जो भारत के टुकड़े करने के उनके नेता बात करते हो जो कच्छ थी वो को दे देते हो क्या वो देश की रक्षा कर सकती है जरा पूरी ताकत से बताइए देश की रक्षा कर सकती है क्या कांग्रेस देश की रक्षा कर सकती है भाई और बहनों कांग्रेस ने तो देश के सीमावर्ती गांवों को भी देश का आखिरी गांव मानकर वहां विकास करना बंद कर दिया था ये भाजपा की सरकार है जिसने सीमा किनारे बसे गांवों को देश का प्रथम गांव माना है वहां तेज गति से विकास किया है इन 1950, देर वॉज एक्चुअली एन एक्सचेंज ऑफ व्यूज बिटवीन सरदार पटेल एंड पंडित नेहरू ऑन द इश्यू ऑफ टाइम क्योंकि दिस लास्ट फ्यू मंथ बिफोर सरदार पटेल पास सरदार पटेल वॉन नेहरू सेंग Today, with the change, because communists had taken power in 1949, he said, "Today we are facing a situation of two fronts, which for India has never happened in our history." So, in the case of Pakistan, I think this is people know that Sardar Patel was opposed to our going to the United Nations because he knew that in United Nations, different powers will use United Nations. हमने आपको पता है कि जज जो है अगर ईमानदार जज नहीं है तो विच वी विल गो टू दैट पॉइंट Yes, CNN News 18's Aman Sharma joining us live straight from the newsroom. Aman, a very good morning to you amidst this continuing uh, mouse and cat game which is going on between the central government as well as the opposition parties at the moment about this entire issue. Where are we standing with the highlights of what exactly transpired there in 1974? Did India actually surrender the rights of fishermen to Sri Lanka? Well, Sakshi, the latest document that we have is a Sri Lankan document Sri Lanka's foreign minister uh, uh, explaining to the parliament of the Sri Lanka in 2008 the significance of the 1974 and the 1976 agreement. What interestingly the Sri Lankan foreign minister has told the Sri Lankan parliament that the 1974 agreement, the article 6 of the agreement says that the vessels of India and Sri Lanka will enjoy in each other's waters rights they traditionally have but these are only navigational rights, these are not fishing rights. He claims by this article in the 1974 agreement, only navigational rights of the vessels of both Sri Lanka and India over each other have been preserved, not fishing rights. He further goes on to say that the 1974 and the 1976 agreements, if you take them together, 
that was signed and, and the exchange of letters, it makes it clear that the question of fishing rights is beyond doubt. It very clearly rules out any fishing rights for the fishermen of the two states in the, way, in the waters of each another state. So the Sri Lankan authorities are very clear that the 1974 agreement which was signed by India with Sri Lanka gave away the fishing rights of our fishermen to go to uh, uh, Kachadu Island at all. And in 1976, this was further cemented when a clear clause was written that this a right of uh, Indians to come there, Indian fishermen to come there is only for navigational purposes, not for fishing purposes. Now, this is very significant because so far it was believed that the 1974 agreement retained the fishermen's rights and it was only in 1976 that the fishermen's rights were given away. That is what the DMK has been claiming that in 1974 when Mr. Karnanidhi was consulted by the centre, the centre said the fishermen's rights will be protected but in 1976 the fishermen's rights were given away and then the DMK turned in protest and then Karnanidhi was not in power but mm. that doesn't seem to be the case from the Sri Lankan documents which is very very clear. You know they have put it out in black and white that uh, the signing of the 1976 agreement, 1974 agreement, exchange letters clearly prohibits fishing vessels and fishermen of one country fishing in the other's waters. Okay. It's very clear that they are not uh, in agree agreement with that and that has been the long stated position of Sri Lanka which has been exposed by these documents. Further, they also say that, you know, this matter has also gone to the Indian Supreme Court. You know, Jai Lalita had taken it the matter to the Supreme Court. The Sri Lankan foreign, uh, foreign minister telling the parliament that whatever the Indian Supreme Court may decide, it will have no binding on Sri Lanka. So this whole talk that, you know, can India retrieve these fishing rights from uh, Sri Lanka, uh, which is the demand of the DMK. Sri Lankan authorities are very clear that there is no way it can be retrieved because this is a bilateral agreement between two sovereign powers. It is not impacted by any court judgment and no country can unilaterally withdraw from it. All right, Aman, please stay with us. We'll try to dive deeper into this entire controversy. But at the moment, CNN News 18's Anand Narasimhan also spoke exclusively to Harish Vardhan Shringla. Let's take a look at that exclusive conversation as well. So from cartographic adventurism of the CCP to uh, some territorial uh, misadventures of uh, erstwhile former leaders of Bharat. So Arunachal Pradesh to Kachati, well, let's just uh, switch focus. Documents that have come to light of what had happened back in 1974. How would you analyze the entire turn of events? <clears throat> well, uh, let me uh, take up what you mentioned in terms of, you know, the comments uh, made by the Prime Minister and the External Affairs Minister and the comments made by the opposition in terms of the, uh, of the mm. Parliament questions and responses thereon. Now, there is an official approach and there is a political approach. Officially, when you have a question in Parliament, you provide the facts. The facts are that, uh, you know, there was a delimitation exercise in which Katya Thivu was, hmm. became a part of Sri Lanka in 1974. And there was a subsequent 1976 agreement in which fishing rights were also deprived. I mean, our fishermen are deprived of those fishing rights in the 76 agreement. Yes. So, in response to a Parliament question, you are responding on factual basis. That is what you are supposed to do. But there is a political imperative that has come out based on the RTI and I suspect, I mean, having dealt with uh, Sri Lanka extensively as Joint Secretary in the neighbourhood right. uh, and this issue of Kachatibu, and I have seen it at close quarters both in terms of what we did with the Supreme Court and our mm. interaction with the Tamil Nadu government etc. And of course the Sri Lankan side. Gee. I can say that, uh, you know, it's uh, in many senses, uh, I think the documentation which is out in the public domain is very timely. Public needs to know.